everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is my hobby YouTube channel where I like to chat about makeup and fashion related topics. And today I have another makeup related video for you because today we are chatting about the new Kiko Precious Rituals Collection. And before I get into these products and everything that I want to share with you in today's video, I do have to point out that I didn't know this was this collection was even happening. I went into store, spotted this, but a lot of the products were already gone. So I decided to go online and place myself an order, which I got in, I think, yesterday. And now I'm seeing the brand saying on their Instagram that this collection is not supposed to launch in the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Even though I spotted this in a Dutch Kiko store. So... I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Um, they don't seem to be that aware of where their own collection is even um, launching, but I wanted to come on here and do another full makeup brand review. And I was sort of a little stuck for which brand to feature next, because I had originally planned to do some other brands, but I wasn't really finding the products or it just got a little bit difficult. Um, and then I spotted this collection. I was like, right Kiko, I think you're onto something and it's been quite a while since I did a full face of Kiko and so what I have for you today is a full face of Kiko Milano makeup but all the products I will be featuring are from this new limited edition Precious Rituals line. So I have everything here save for two products because those weren't part of the collection and that is a setting spray and a face powder. But everything else, from primer, to concealer, to foundation, to eyeliner, to mascara, to lip products, to bronzer, blush, highlight, eyeshadow, all of this is by Kiko from this one same collection that has just, just dropped, which is why I wanted to sort of come on here ASAP, film this video for you, so that hopefully you can decide what you would like to get from this collection in case you were looking for them. Now I'm going to be putting a product on first and then I'll tell you more about this collection, about Kiko, about why I decided to buy these things because there is a product that I know is going to take a couple of minutes to just settle down before I can do the rest of my makeup and that product would be the uh, Precious Radi Rituals Radiant Vegan Serum. And I just, I kept a couple of the boxes around because it's just so, so pretty. But I'll talk to, i talk to you about that in a minute when I have this on. Because this is quite an oily texture. It is a face serum, so it's more of a skincare kind of product. But I'm going to be using this as my base layer, so a bit as a primer. Um, because I have already worn makeup today. If my face looks a little red, that's because I just took off all of my makeup so it could sit down and film this video. So my skin feels a little dry and it can definitely need a little bit of sprucing up. So that's why I thought this could be a great first step. And then because it is this very sort of thin, like liquidy kind of product, like it starts running down your hands, instantly but I thought it could be very very nice and I think I'm gonna actually have to put it on like this because it is one of those more like oil based kind of serums which I mean my dry skin loves it um, it is very heavily fragranced so that may be good to know if you're sensitive to fragrance don't buy this because it has a pretty strong florally scent uh, and as I'm rubbing this in my skin will probably look um, a little red as well just from rubbing it because that's just hap that's what happens if you have very fairly sensitive skin and it does I think settle down quite quickly um, but with oils like this I tend to just prefer to let it sit for just a minute or two before I move on with the rest of my makeup because I feel it just helps the makeup last so while we are waiting for this to settle down, I want to talk to you a little bit about this collection, why I decided to buy everything, and just why I wanted to do this video 
pretty much, uh, and then we'll continue with the rest of the products. And before we get into it though, I do want to point out that I will be having close-up swatches of all of these products in the description box down below. You will find a link there to the blog post that goes with this video. Um, I just have issues like filming like close-ups and doing all that. I'm, I'm someone who films these things for fun after a long, long work day. So that's why um, I do have pictures of all of those products already. So I'll show you those, but I'll put those in the blog post. So if you wanna see things more up close, then uh, those will be in that blog post so you can see a little bit better what some of the textures may look like. Uh, none of that is on my face though, because this is the first time I'm trying all of these products out. So let's get started there. So as I mentioned, about a week ago, I went into the Kiko store just randomly, just to see what they have going on. They do limited editions quite regularly. And I'm not someone who follows the brand very loyally, um, but they do some really nice things. I actually did a full face of Kiko before, so I'll make sure to link that video down below as well, because that features some of my more favorite Kiko products that have really stood this, the test of time. And some of those have been favorites for years. Like there's a highlighter that they do that I love. So Kiko has been uh, sort of, yeah, very <laughs> uh, successful for me, you could say. So that's why I always like seeing what they have going on. Very often, a lot of their collections don't really speak to me all that much. I do dabble around and sort of buy a couple of things, but usually I don't buy them until they go on sale because Kiko is on the more, let's say, expensive side of drugstore. So for me, the way I would categorize Kiko price-wise is sort of like around Physician's Formula kind of pricing. Over here, it's quite similar to things like Maybelline or L'Oreal. So that means that a lot of their products are like $12.50, $14.99. So while they are affordable compared to like a Too Faced or a MAC or an Urban Decay or those kind of brands, it's definitely more affordable than that. But this full face of Kiko that I just purchased did cost me close to like, I think 200 euros and then I got a discount because they had some sort of deal that day. Um, so I did get some money off, but I think if I had paid full price for everything, it, I would have spent over 200 euros, which I make a little bit of money with my YouTube channel, so I kind of put that money towards these kind of videos. Uh, so that may be good to know, but I do want to point out that this may not be as affordable as your Wet n Wild or your Essence or Catrice or Elf. You know, it's not one of those kind of drugstore uh, drugstore brands. They are drugstore priced, but over here we can also only get them from um, like set Kiko stores or online and. When you buy from them online, I think it is shipped directly from Italy because that's what happened in my case. It was shipped from Milan to, uh, to Amsterdam. And that also then takes over a week to just simply get here. So those are some things that you need to know about the brand. And this collection in particular just really, really caught my eye. The, the packaging is this like brownish orange kind of terracotta colored box. And then some of the products come in this plum colored box and that's also what we get in some of the outer packaging now some of it however especially the compacts come in the most gorgeous gorgeous packaging this is a wooden compact and this is the eyeshadow palette and just look at the attention to detail and this is why this collection just drew my eye and what I like about these is that you can twist them to really shut them. So I do like that as well. And then the face products all come in this like plum packaging. And then it has the most gorgeous, gorgeous embossing on it. Again, close up pictures of all of these products will be on my blog so that you can really have a look at these patterns. And I always like to take pictures of my products when they're still pristine so that I have like really, really good pictures to showcase on my blog. And since I don't know how long this will be around for, I'm just going to make one giant blog post to accompany this video so you can have all the close-ups and everything. And then this video can show you everything going on to my face. That was the idea. However, I do have some products here that may be a bit little tricky to use in one video, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna roll with it. So yeah, gorgeous packaging. Kiko in general, 
has some really lovely product uh, quality. I have never really tried a lot of duds from the brand. I've tried some lipsticks, I've tried their foundations, I've tried powders, bronzers, highlighters. So I've tried a good deal um, and the products that I have tried I'm very happy with, but like I said, because they are a little bit higher priced, um, I don't tend to buy this much Kiko in one go, but this was just such a standout collection for me that I was like, I haven't heard anybody talking about this yet, so I want to come on here and do a giant video. So enough of me rambling. I think my face has had enough of a chance to settle down and s let that serum sink in. And now my face just feels really nice again. It's really one of those like oily serums that if you have dry skin, you're just going to love. But like I said, it does have a very strong florally fragrance. So that may not be your cup of tea. There were a couple of other like body care kind of items in this collection. That's something that Kiko also does. They do skincare ranges, they do body care ranges as well. But this is the only one that I bought because I, I didn't really need anything else. So this is gonna go into my uh, skincare drawer uh, in my cupboard in my bathroom so that I can uh, get some more use out of it when I need another oil uh, because I don't think it's necessarily a serum. But for the sake of the video, that's what I've been doing. And then before we move into um, like foundation and all that, I wanted to go in with a lip product. This is the, ooh, yeah, this is just called a lip balm and it seems to be like a liquid thing. I thought it was going to be more like a gloss, but it's called a lip balm. So I hope it's going to be like balmy enough to like sit on my skin um, and then we can move on to the lip products at the end of the video because I do have two lipsticks as well for you. Um, so yeah, this is the Precious Rituals Shine and Care Vegan Lip Balm. Now Kiko unfortunately doesn't put the names of the products <laughs> on the actual compact. So I'm going to have to make sure to write all of the names in the description box down below because I wouldn't No, I just have a number here. This is zero one. That's all I know right now, but please check out the description box if you want to see the full name. I definitely think that this is more of like a lip balm kind of product rather than a lip gloss. It seems to be very, uh, a little bit of a thicker texture, but it does have a doe food applicator as you just saw me use. And it does put a little bit of a layer on my lips. So I'm just going to let this sink in and hopefully it will do something for my lips to nourish them as we're doing this makeup routine before we move on to actual lipstick. Okay, I've tried zooming you in just a little bit so that hopefully it's a little bit more close up. And we're moving in with the foundation. And this is the Precious Rituals Velvet Flawless Vegan Foundation. Now this product has me a little bit confused because this product has a different description on the website and on the bottle than it does on the box. So I already threw out the box, but I did take pictures of it. Um, but this is called the um, Fluid Foundation with a Natural Matte Finish shake well before use. That's what it says on the actual bottle and that was also the description on the website. However, on the box it says that this is supposed to be a hydrating light coverage foundation and when I swatch this it's super liquidy and I actually think that it is more of a hydrating more lightweight foundation because it doesn't really seem to have a very matte finish when I blend it out. I mean especially in this lighting, you can just see it reflecting a little bit. So I think this has a not the best description. Um, I got it in the lightest shade, which has me a little nervous. I believe it's cold porcelain. It's not that light, which is another problem that I have with some Kiko products and why I don't try them all the time is because their complexion products skew more light to medium skin and aren't that fair girl friendly. I haven't really looked into how well their range is in terms of like deeper shades, but especially on the like edges of the spectrum, they don't do the best job in their complexion products, especially their foundations. And as you will see in a minute, also their highlighters and bronzers tend to be a little bit on the deeper end usually. But let me apply this foundation to my face. Okay, so in the viewfinder, this is looking pretty okay, I have to say. However, in real life, it's far too yellow for me. It doesn't really have the right undertone, and I think this 
this particular foundation only came in like five shades so I don't think it's the most inclusive of shades. I like the finish this gives. It has a more hydrating finish. So I definitely think this is not a matte one at all. So that's perhaps good to know that this doesn't exactly do what you might expect from it if you were to just read the description online. And the shade Porcelain, it's just, it's not perfect. I think it's one that I can get away with especially once most of my makeup is gonna be done. I'm pretty sure it's going to look fine, but this kind of shade is just, it's just a little bit off. I'm glad I bought this one and not a different one because it is definitely like borderline too dark. Moving on then to another product, and this is the Precious Rituals Hydrating, Hydrating Vegan Concealer. I also have this in shade 01, and I believe this shade was called Ivory, if I'm not mistaken. And just look at how light that is. I mean, compared to how dark this, this foundation is, let me just swatch them side by side. So this is the concealer. And then, since this is a simple squeezy tube, I'm sure I can show you these side by side. Do you see how much darker that foundation is? Like, <laughs> how are these the lightest shades in your range? Kiko, you have some explaining to do. So yeah, the foundation is much, much darker than the concealer is. That may be good to know. But I tried this on the back of my hand already and I have to say I was pretty impressed with it. So it feels pretty good, like it still has a bit of coverage, but it also seems to blend away quite easily into the skin, I mean. So not like away away, but it blends into the skin quite nicely. So let's see what this looks like on. Okay, so I quite enjoy the look of this concealer. It is very natural though. It's not a full, full coverage, heavy duty concealer. Nothing like a Tarte Shape Tape. This is much more of like a dewy, lightweight, um, more like a liquid, liquefied version of the Glossier Stretch Concealer. That's what this reminds me of a lot. It gives me a, a similar kind of coverage. So this is one that if I truly wanna cover up my dark circles, I would probably have to put a uh, corrector underneath it just to make sure to first tone down the blueness uh, because I always have a little bit of darkness going on there. That's just hereditary. I can't really do anything about it. It's just my genetics. So I always have a bit of darkness there and that it doesn't cover that completely, but I feel I don't need to cover up everything. I like it when my skin still looks like my skin. And I definitely think this foundation and concealer combo does that for me. Now that I've put the foundation and the concealer together, I can say that they blend in quite easily. And even though that concealer looked really, really light, because it has such a lightweight texture, I feel it kind of blends away and you can't really detect it anywhere, which I like. I'm quickly going to put on powder, which is the Catrice All Matte Shine Control Powder, and then we'll move on with the rest of this makeup. Now, I didn't lie <laughs> when I was telling you about how many of these products I bought because I also put in some brow stuff. They put some brow products in this collection and I thought I could just try it. I have the Precious Rituals Vegan Brow Pencil in shade 01 and then they did a Lash and Brow Serum. So again, I'm not sure whether this is gonna do anything in terms of setting for my brow, so I actually wanna go into this first because it just seems to be like a clear, liquidy kind of product. So I'm not sure whether this is supposed to do anything in terms of like really toning things down. So I'm gonna brush this into my brows first to see if it does anything else and then go in with the pencil because I'm afraid that if I put in the pencil first that this just gets a bit grubby as well. And I, I haven't tried acrylic brow gel in ages, so might as well. Okay, so I'm not used to such a big brush. Uh, so let's start there. It's a very, very big brush. I'm not sure if you can even even tell. Let me hold it against this. Do you just see how big that brush is? So I don't feel I can really get into all the crevices of my brows, you could say. And I also don't really feel they do anything in terms of like brushing things up. It does seem to have a little bit of hold, but I'm not sure this is going to be like my favorite brow gel of all time. But yeah, I, I think I'm just going to finish this and then maybe I'm gonna top it off with the Essence one if I feel I need a little bit more texture in my brows because that's what I like about the Essence one is that it does add a little bit of lift and it adds those little fibers 
that really give your uh, brows just a bit, a bit more of a defined look. And this is just, it's like I didn't put anything in, right? So let's go in with the pencil. It's just a regular pencil that you need to sharpen, which I haven't used a brow pencil like this in a while, but it seems to have a good, cool toned, ashy undertone. And I love that. So that's the kind of thing I want for my brow products. Okay, so the only thing I really do with a brow pencil is fill in my brows. I've used a spoolie to try and see if I can make my brows have a, a bit more lift, but it really doesn't do it. So I think this serum is definitely not like a brow gel kind of product. It's definitely more like a conditioning product for your brows, which is a bit of a shame because there is no other like brow gel type of product in this collection. So I'm not sure that I'm the biggest fan of this. I probably have to go back to it. The pencil I think is pretty cool. Um, I'm just not really sure I like the sharpening thing. And then we move to perhaps the best part of this collection, which is the bronzer. I'm not even sure you can see this. Hold on. I'm going to have to show you this up close. So I hope you were able to see that lovely pattern in the bronzer. This comes in two shades. I have the lightest shade, which is called Honey. It looks to be okay for my skin tone, which with a lot of Kiko limited edition bronzers, I always find they are far too orange. So we'll see how this goes. We have the highlighter in 01, Copper and Calm. And this is actually the lightest one they do. The other one is very golden toned and this seemed more like a rose gold. So I thought maybe I can get away with it. However, I also tried the highlighter from their Fruit Explosion line and that was also a rose gold and sadly that had way too much pigmentation in the base layer so it really sort of sat on top of my skin. I kind of bought that one in sale so I haven't really used it in any other videos but since I tried it once I kind of know I won't be going back to it. However, in a swatch this seemed less intense and it kind of looked a little bit better than the one from the fruit explosion. So I hope I can still pull it off and make it work. And then I've got two of the blushes. There's also a peachy one, but I really couldn't say no to these guys. So I've got a lighter one and a deeper one. The darker one is 03 Copper Infusion. That's this one. And then this is 02 Mauve Harmony. And I think just for the sake of the video, I'm going to be applying both of these. So one to one cheek and the other to the other cheek, just so you can see both of these going on. And these have a, like a matte pigment on the one hand side that on the one side that has a bit of a color to it. And then the other side is a rose gold, more shiny one. And you can just see that one is just a little deeper than the other. So they're a split pan. One side is matte, the other side is shimmery, and these all have a mirror in the lid as well. And as I already demonstrated in the intro, these are wood, and you can sort of like twist them to shut them, which I think is pretty ingenious. It's bulky packaging, but I do quite like it. So let me put these products on. Let me swatch them first. So that's what these products look like. So we've got the bronzer first, which looks perfect for my skin tone. The highlighter, which looks just a tad too deep perhaps, uh, it does have a bit more shine to it. And then two glowy blushes, one in like a mauve pink kind of shade and one that's a little bit more warm toned and a little bit darker. But I, I couldn't really pick between these two, so I bought both. So let's go in with the bronzer first. Okay, so the bronzer, I think perfect amount of glow that I need for this kind of time of year. Um, it's a really good shade for me. So the bronzer, I like, that's a keeper. Moving on to the highlight. Oh, can you, I'm not sure if you can see this, but this highlighter is far too dark for me. It has a very strong, like bronzy rose gold kind of undertone, and then it has a shine. So especially when I try to put it up here, like I always do this C with my highlighting brush, uh, I now just have like a dark patch here. It, there's a bit of glow here for sure, but there's just such a, like it's, it's almost as if I put it a, a very glowy bronzer on rather than a highlight, if that makes sense. Now what I'll do is I'll start with the lightest shade and I'll put that onto this cheek. 
also quite warm tone and bronzy. Do you see that? And actually for how light this swatch is, I feel it it has quite a bit of pigmentation and it's quite an intense shade. I don't ne necessarily make it look this dark in real life. It looks a lot darker in real life than it does in the viewfinder, so I hope this shows up okay. So I'm trying to take most of that off, off of the brush, and now we're going to go with this darker shade, so I'm going to have to be very careful with this, onto this cheek. I think you can see a bit of a difference, especially if I look in the viewfinder. You can see that this um, is just a little, it's almost more natural, I feel. Maybe because I use a lighter hand. I really like the look of this. Like if you use a light hand with these, I think, I think we can make them work even if we're fair. And next up we're going to be doing eyes. And I'm going to zoom you in in a bit so you can see everything a little bit more close up, but I'll show you first what I've got going on here, because I don't just have an eyeshadow palette as I already showed you, but I also have some eyeliners as well as this product. And this is a uh, base product with a eyeshadow, like a cream shadow. And in case you don't know, uh, Kiko makes some of my favorite coal pencils as well as shadow sticks. Um, so they do some really nice things there. Um, this comes with a like a cream, just a matte cream on one side, and then this really gorgeous, like, oystery, taupey shade. Let me swatch that right there. Uh, in On the other side. This is in the shade 01. I believe there were a couple of different shades. So I'm going to be using that matte shade as I would a MAC paint pot and see if it works the same way. Uh, and then we'll use the eyeshadow palette, which is in Spiritual Pink 02, which is a gorgeous mauve-toned sort of uh, eyeshadow palette. And then I'll use this on the lower lash line, which is a blue um, vegan eyeliner in Kajal. And then we have a black liquid liner, which is always a bit nerve-wracking for me, but I've never tried one. And this, by the way, let me show you this. It is not waterproof, as far as I can tell. But this is one of the blackest black eyeliners I've ever seen. And then if I swatch, there we have the blue liner. I'm not sure if the blue goes with the actual eyeshadow, <laughs> uh, but this looked really pretty too, so. So we've got like, three mattes and one shimmer, so that's sort of like, it's it's good enough for like a single little look. Um, and Kiko does some really lovely eyeshadows as well, so that's, that's where we have those shadows right there. So let me show you this on and zoom you in. I'm going to fast forward through this part, um, so I'm not going to be talking through you to you, I'm just going to come back at the end to let you know my thoughts on how I felt these products went on. So that would be the eye look done, and I have to say I quite like it. The eyeshadow palette is perhaps a bit more pink toned than I had expected. Uh, these two shades pull more like warm pinks, 
rather than mauve tone. So I would have preferred these even more if they had just a little bit more plum running through it. However, I think that these shadows are really, really nice. Now, star of the show, however, is this eyeshadow stick in shade 01. I already showed you that this is a really nice, like, taupey, taupey, oystery kind of shade. And I felt it was a perfect base because I first went in with this shimmer, but I felt it didn't really have the intensity I'd like it to have. So then I went in with the sh stick over it, and then I applied this on top again, and I felt that had lots more impact. Really lovely. And I already knew I was going to love their eyeliner, so I just put popped a little bit of that on the lower lash line. Uh, which is the only place where I tend to wear these kind of liners. Anyways, and then I used the liquid liner, which is something, it's a product I hardly ever use. We all know I don't really like liquid liner, and I think we kind of saw it today, because since my eyes are sort of like deep set slash hooded, uh, a lot of my lid actually disappears the moment I open my eyes, and then I feel all you see is eyeliner, and I prefer if you can see most of my eyeshadow. Um, so with a look like this that is super basic, I really don't mind that look. However, I do prefer a green or a brown eyeliner on myself rather than a black, because I feel it's usually a little too intense. Um, against my fair skin tone. However, if I look at it in the viewfinder, I do really like the look that this gives. It's very soft, very feminine, really classy. And then I top things off with a product I haven't shown you yet, and that is the Volume and Length Effect Vegan Mascara. So I think one of the selling points of this entire collection is that a lot of the products are vegan, if not all of them. And I was surprised to open this because I hadn't opened this yet, but it comes with a volumizing mascara, if you open one step, and then it comes with a, another step, and then you get a lengthening mascara. So I do find the brush of the lengthening mascara to be a bit big for my lower lash line, for instance, which is why I did pull in my Catrice Glamandol Waterproof, also because I feel that never smudges on my lower lash line, so um, that's, that's sort of my trick right there, but yeah, this seemed to be a good enough mascara. And I have to say, I quite like all of these products. Kiko can do some really good eye products. I already knew that, and they do, don't prove me wrong at all. Right, so I've put up, popped on some setting spray, and now we're going to go in with some lip products. And I couldn't really decide on the shade, so that's why I bought two of the Vegan Matte Lip Stilo. I bought shade 01 and shade 05, and since the look is quite natural, I think 05 will be the prettiest. 01 is quite light, so I'll put, put, put that one on first, take it off, and then show you this one. By the way, that lip balm has really sunk into my uh, lips, so it's definitely more of a balm than a gloss, which I'm happy with. So this is sh shade 01, and it's like a peachy pinky nude, which is just a little bit too light for my lip color. Online, this looked to be a little bit more like a mauve pink. That's what I was expecting this to be. But it turns out to be lighter and much more peachy than I had expected. That's just one of the downsides of ordering things online, I'm afraid. I can really clearly see my natural lip color coming through, which is a bit of a shame. So I think the next one, 05, will be much more flattering on me. This one is going to have to go straight onto the declutter pile. And now that I'm putting this on, it seems to have a bit of that same floral scent that the serum had as well. So I'm not sure I like that all that much. And as I had predicted, 05 is much more perfect for me. It is like a darker mauve with a plummy undertone, which I really like. I don't think I have too many of these in my collection yet. So this is one that's definitely a keeper. I think it could get a lot of wear out of this. I think it's a perfect, perfect lip color for the fall time. And I think it really ties the look together because it goes really well with this pinky eyeshadow that I've got going on, which I think looks really soft and pretty. Um, because the eyeliner is blue, it's good that the uh, lip color also has a bit of that blue undertone. And I think it goes really nicely with the shirt I'm wearing today. So. Total win-win situation all across the board. So that's all of the products that I just put on my face. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed. There aren't any products here that really have me go like, wow, this is amazing, but I never feel that way the first time I try makeup. I always have to 
you'll use them a little bit more regularly. So look out for these coming up in Shop My Stashes. I'm pretty sure I will be featuring some of these in the future. I think that if you were to get one thing, make it one of the face products. I think that especially the blushes are these the two. These blushes are really, really good. I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of these. They are nicely glowy and not too, too much. And now that I feel that I look at it, I don't, you could buy either one of these and they will look stunning. This one with a heavier hand will give you the same effect as this with a light hand I have found. So shade wise, these aren't too far off. Um, and I think that they look really, really nice, nice and glowy, but without it going overboard. And now that I feel everything is done, I also think that this highlighter, yes, this is the highlighter, that it actually ties everything together quite nicely. I just shouldn't take it up too far up towards the brow and the bronzer is just a really, really good uh, way, like a really good color just to bronze up my face and give it a little bit more color and make it a little less ghostly. I also think the texture of the foundation is really nice. It is a more glowy foundation. So even though this set matte online, I feel it's definitely more of a hydrating, dewy finish. This doesn't make me look overly shiny, but I do feel I've got a healthy glow on my forehead, on my nose, on my chin, and nothing looks really dry and cakey. I actually really like my the way my skin looks. The lip balm was really nice. The concealer is nice. The serum, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to use a lot more. I, I can be quite sensitive to fragrance sometimes, so this is a product that I would have to like almost use up to really be able to tell you how I feel. That's just how it goes with me in skincare, I'm afraid. The eyeshadow palette is really lovely. I'm not sure I, I'll get a whole lot of use out of these shades, but I think it's a good replacement of an old Kiko product that I have. <laughs> That's actually very similar in terms of like the shades you get in there. So um, maybe, maybe a good one to sort of update the Kiko eyeshadows that I have. Um, perhaps the one thing that I feel is the biggest letdown are the brow products. Those really aren't spectacular. So I would say stay away from the brow products. These lip products feel very nice. Even though they are matte, they still feel very balmy and nice and just a good texture, like nothing drying. The mascara seems to be quite promising. I already knew I loved Kiko eyeshadow sticks and eyeliners. So yeah, Kiko did a good job with this one. So thank you very much for watching today's video, everybody. I hope that you were able to get a good overview of this new Kiko collection that, that just dropped. Right, and just as I'm rounding off my battery, my camera battery cuts out again. But yeah, as I was saying, um, if you're looking for these products, then please check out Kiko, their website, their socials. They can help you find these products in your territory. I'm not a Kiko representative. I don't know how you can get these. I bought these online through their official website. That's all I can tell you. Apparently, they don't even know when things are going to come out, where they're going to come out, because they were saying that these products are not available to me and I was able to buy them just fine. So thank you very much for watching today's video, everybody. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. It would very much help me out if you uh, can sort of spread the love. Uh, and of course, if you would like to see more by me, I would very much appreciate it if you could join this little family that I've got going on here by subscribing to my channel. I make three new videos every single week. I do a full face of brand so-and-so every single month, and I have been doing that for almost two years now. So I've got lots of these full face reviews uh, up on my channel. I even have a playlist with it, so you can check those, those out below as well. So I'll make sure to leave that link in the description box. And then without further ado, all I can wish you is a very happy day. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.